At night, I remember you and I. We were inseparable. We, we got good energy. We got that chemistry. We were inseparable. First things first, before we get the video started, thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers. That is the milestone we've been aiming for, and I told you guys we have a special video dropping when we hit 100 subs. That is not this video. This video idea actually came from Kata X Han. He said, you should do a fantasy draft with only 70 or under overalls. Your goal is to win the Super Bowl. He did say back to back, but we're going to go for one Super Bowl of this for this video. If we get to like six or seven years and we don't win a Super Bowl, that's going to be that. But expect a video coming soon, a 100 subscriber special. I originally had my own idea in mind, but the more I thought about it, the harder it would be to make work. So I asked you guys to comment videos for the 100 sub subscriber special. I've actually gotten a pretty good idea so far, so if you guys have anything you want to see, let me know. Maybe you guys have a better idea. With all that being said, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Madden Fantasy Draft, for more Madden Rebuilds. Just turn your phone vertical and press subscribe real quick and it'll mean so much to me and I'll give you a big fat kiss. But yeah, like I said, today we are doing a fantasy draft and we are only able to draft players if they are 70 overalls or lower. I was going to kind of give myself some leeway and make it 75, but I don't know. Let's try to keep it difficult for this one. My goal for the fantasy draft is just going to be trying to draft players that are somewhat developable. I don't know if that word came out right. Drafting players that are somewhat developable. And, you know, we're going to have to hope some good people hit free agency soon. We're going to have to hope to have very good drafts in the upcoming years. But I don't think this will be impossible. So we have the 19th pick in the fantasy draft, which I don't think where we pick is going to matter much because, you know, we're not getting any of these top guys on the board. And I think who we're going to be starting off with... No, I swore Anthony Richardson was a 70 overall. They made him, made him a 74. So the best quarterback we could go for is probably Will Levis. Ooh, we could go for Mac Jones, too. We could go for Zach Wilson. Ooh, and I think our running back that we're going to take is going to be Deuce Vaughn. That looks like the best available running back to me. Mm, should I make it where we can do 75 and lower? You know what? If I made it where we were able to draft 75s and lower, the team would just be a lot of rookies that are going to be easy to develop. I think that's cheating the challenge. So we are only going to be drafting players 70 overall and lower. I'm not going to cheat it. But with that being said, let's go ahead and make our first pick, which is going to be Mac Jones. I'd like to go for Will Levis, but Mac Jones has star dev, Will Levis has normal, which I almost feel like could be reversed. But that's besides the point. We're going with Mac Jones with our first overall pick, or not first overall, but our first round pick. He's rated 506th in uh, true value. I believe for quarterback, we're going to go Deuce Vaughn. I honestly thought that he had hidden dev, if I'm being honest. I don't know why. Yeah, that's weird. I thought Deuce Vaughn was better in this game, but we're going to take him anyway here in the second round. 70 overall in the third round we're going with jelani wood 70 overall uh star dev 24 years old with our next pick we're going to take isaiah foskey he's 70 overall uh he has hayden dev he's only 22 years old so this is one of those players that we're going to be able to take that can hopefully develop for us down the line and the last pick i'm probably going to show here is ricky stromberg another rookie he's a 69 overall but yeah i'm gonna make a decent amount of these picks you know at least till there's not many high overalls left on the board because i don't want the cpu you know, messing everything I did up. I'll try to at least take, um, you know, a starter and a backup for every position, but I'll see you guys when this team is complete. I forgot to press the record button. Um, I took every starting and backup position in the fantasy draft for offense and defense, and I also took a kicker and punter. The CPU ended up taking a couple players higher than a 70 overall, but honestly, I'm just going to leave it how it is. It's not the end of the world. Here's a look at the defense. We have one corner that's higher than a 70, but everybody else is 70 or below. And on offense, I think we have like two receivers that are higher than 70. So I don't think it'll matter much, especially because our team is a 68 overall. So the hope is that Mac Jones will be able to develop. But with this supporting cast around him, I don't see a very good chance of that happening. So we may end up having to take a quarterback in one of these future drafts. But the team is complete. Let's get, we'll just go straight to the end of the first year. We'll see how this team finishes off and if we can even win a game. And wow, we actually won two games on the year. Who did we beat? So we beat the Patriots in week 12 and we beat the Eagles in week 16. But let's take a look at our stats on the year because this should be interesting. I mean, Mac Jones could have been worse for how terrible his supporting cast was. He passes for 3,000 yards, 15 touchdowns, 14 picks, only a 58% completion percentage. Deuce Vaughn was fucking 
awful. He gets 2.9 yards per carry, 800 yards, and a touchdown. Marquise Goodwin was our leading receiver. We technically shouldn't even have him, but um, Denzel Mims got seven touchdowns, so I guess that's good. Hey, Will Clapp only allowed four sacks. That's how a real man plays O-line. Anthony Barr got 133 tackles, so that's good to see. We got 22 TFLs out of Jordan Willis, 15 out of Isaiah Foskey. Foskey also got four and a half sacks. We got four out of Jordan Willis, two out of Anthony Barr. We'll take a look at the yearly awards. We're obviously not going to win any of them. Mahomes wins MVP for the Bills. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Jones, who is on the Panthers. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Quentin Williams, who is on the Saints. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Puka Nakua for the Packers. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jalen Carter on the 49ers. Isaiah Foskey actually here in fifth place and Riley Moss in sixth. But yeah, we should have the number one overall pick in the upcoming draft. Do we go for quarterback or do we try to add some more weapons to this offense before we do that? That's the question. Because this first year of free agencies, there's not going to be anybody to add because the first free agent class of um, fantasy drafts, all the teams just have money to bring back all the players they need to. But the Bengals win the Super Bowl over the Bucks, 35 to 7. We have 128 mil to spend here in free, or not in free agency, to bring back our players. John, Jelani Woods is one of the better players for this team. So we'll give him five years, 32 mil, and he resigns. I think Petit Freer played pretty good for us. I think it was our other tackle that allowed all those sacks. Or he did allow nine, but I guess let's bring him back for now, just in case we're not able to hit on somebody better here soon. He doesn't even take it. It's not the end of the world. Honestly, I don't feel like going through and re-signing all these guys. It's not going to matter in the long run. So let's look at free agents because we are obviously have room to upgrade at almost every position. So even if only some bad players hit here, like we could still go for them. But Jimmy Ward's old. We don't have any use for him. We're going to have to go for younger guys. Like, we could go for Garrett Williams. We could go for Isaiah Spiller, but he's pretty bad in this game. But in free agency, we're going to go for John Mechie, Ayo Adeyingbo, Garrett Williams, Ray Ray McLeod, and James Houston, who I actually really want. There's other teams interested in him, so we got to give him a bigger offer because James Houston would be a really nice addition to this team. We are now his top offer, so let's send all of these offers through. And it looks like everybody signs, and we got everybody we went for. So, hey, we added a couple, you know, decent pieces to the team. They're definitely good for how our team looks right now. So going into the draft, this is what the lineup is looking like. We could pretty much draft whatever we wanted, and it would be an upgrade for us. We probably won't draft running back. We'll, we'll most likely draft a receiver. I want to say we're going to draft a quarterback, but I almost feel like that's, I don't know. I Because Mac Jones is obviously playing bad, but he doesn't have very many weapons to work with. We're also, I drafted our players to fit a 4-3 and run a 3-4. So um, there was a pretty good looking receiver and some decent looking corners. We're going to have the number one overall pick. So maybe we could even trade it down and see what we could get out of it. Ooh, but I kind of want the number one overall pick because if we could get Justin Hill, this would be huge. He's 21 out of Louisville. He's not very fast, but he's really strong. He had 20 bin traps as a receiver. He has A release, A spec catch, A run block, A short route, A break tackle, A awareness, A catch in traffic, B catching. You get the gist. This guy's perfect. But would I be better off trading down and trying to get more? How does Bobby Stevens look? He has elite strength. I mean, he looks pretty good, but I don't know. Maybe we just take the receiver and we commit to having a good pick next year as well. I think that's what we're going to do. The receiver looks really good. What's good about this, though, is I can draft pretty much whatever position I want because, you know, every position for us is bad. So with the first overall pick, we will be taking Justice, or I'm sorry, Justin Hill out of Louisville. Hidden Dev, 89 speed, 92 jumping, 91 excel, and he's 6'4", 221. That guy's a unit. My guess is he's going to be a 79 overall. There are still a couple decent quarterbacks left. Joshua Staten looks pretty good. He's 22 out of Oregon State. He has elite change of direction and elite strength. Pretty good accuracy. He's good under pressure. Good throw on the run. His awareness scares me a little bit. I think he's going to be normal dev. But fuck it. Let's take him. And he doesn't have normal dev. He has hidden with 93 throw power. With our next pick, I actually really like Niles Poole. He's 23 out of Florida. He had 33 bench reps at the Combine and ran a 505. Really good pass blocker. Not the best run blocker, but I think it's going to be all right. We're going to go ahead and take Niles Poole here. He only has normal dev. He does have 86 strength, with ac which actually isn't that good. And I actually kind of like Brian Miller. He's not very fast. He actually has poor speed, but he has elite excel for what that's worth. He has B man and B press. Only C zone, but he has B tackle, B catching, B block shedding. 
This guy would almost be a pretty good receiver, but we're gonna go with Brian Miller here. He only has normal dev, but his ratings look okay. Maybe he'll at least be like a 70 something and can play for us. We are in the fifth round at this point, or we're technically still in the fourth round, but our next pick is in the fifth round. So we'll get to the draft recap and let the CPU take over from here. And this draft could definitely have been a little bit better, but the receiver we took is great. He's a 78. I think I guess that he'd be a 79. The quarterback is only a 71, but he has hidden dev. He's probably our quarterback of the future. Pool's a 72. He's probably going to start for us at left tackle. And Brian Miller did end up being a 70 overall. And it looks like we pretty much got the best player in the class other than the 79 overall center, which I'd much rather, which I would much rather have Justin Hill than the center. But I'm pretty happy with how the lineup is looking after this season. We got a rookie starting left tackle. Hopefully he'll do good for us. Hopefully Staten will be good at quarterback. And if we could somehow get Staten or Hill to win offensive rookie of the year, that would be huge for this team. And then on defense, we're going to move Miller up in the depth chart just so we can try to maybe get him defensive rookie of the year. Damn, and I didn't resign our kicker and punter. So I'll do that before we get into the season. Or I guess I could get an even better kicker and punter because we're not in the fantasy draft anymore. We can pick up whoever we want. Like there's a couple undrafted free agents that we could take here. I guess we'll go for Matt Samuels at a free agency. Roy Lopez is also in free agency. I guess we'll go ahead and sign him. I almost want to say that this guy was on our original team, but let me just sign our kicker and punter and then we'll get the season started. Going into this season, we have a 72 overall team. If we were able to win two games last year, I would guess that we're going to win three or four this year. I'd still like to have the number one overall pick again. Maybe we trade it down this time get as much value that we can out of it. But let's get straight to the end of the season again, and let's see how this team finishes off this year. Your mama thought that we were gonna last, I thought it too. And we actually did get one more win than the previous year. We go 3-14. and 14. We have the last offensive points per game and the last defense. Joshua Statton also had a pretty bad year. We'll still probably keep him as the starter. 3,100 yards, 17 touchdowns, 16 picks. Pretty much almost the exact same as what Mac Jones did. Looks like Davis Price got the starting role this year, and he did about just as bad as Deuce Vaughn did. I don't know why Deuce Vaughn didn't get a single snap, but Justin Hill actually went kind of crazy. 960 yards and five touchdowns. Hopefully that's enough for rookie of the year. Wow, Niles Poole was fucking terrible. He allows 19 sacks. Owen Papo got 149 tackles. He might have led the league in tackles. He might get a dev up for that. That's fucking crazy. 20 TFLs out of Oya Inga Bo. I'm going to keep butchering that name. 17 out of Foskey, 3 dude 13 out of james houston and we got seven sacks out of oide yungbo as well three out of foskey three out of cox mvp goes to patrick mahomes again on the bills nfc offensive player of the year goes to travis Etienne. Stevens player of the year goes to aaron donald offensive rookie of the year does go to justin hill it's fucking huge staten comes in third place defensive rookie of the year goes to antoine jenkins for the commanders isn't there a real guy named antoine jenkins i don't fucking know but brian miller comes in ninth place and the Cowboys win the Super Bowl because why wouldn't they? They win 31 to 24 over the Jaguars. But it's time to take a look at everybody's dev trait after the offseason or at the beginning of the offseason. And Justin Hill is X Factor. He may have gotten upgraded to X Factor just for winning rookie of the year. No, he only got like uh, XP upgrades and shit. So he was X Factor out the womb. Staten is only star. He also has negative four morale. We'll probably give him one more year though. Although Mac Jones is up, to, we'll probably trade Mac Jones to be honest. And on defense, I want to say all of these dev traits are the same. For some reason, Foskey's playing D tackle and left end. I don't even fucking know. And Anthony Barr. Oh no, I was gonna say he retired. He's just down to a 67 overall. I love my boy Anthony Barr, Vikings legend. But for re-signings, we have 130 million to spend. Um, I guess we'll try to bring back Ronnie Hickman. He's one of the higher overall players on this team. He's not very interested. We'll give him four years, 16 mil. And he wants to test out free agency, whatever. Deuce Vaughn didn't even really play for us this year. He wants a really cheap deal. I guess we'll just give it to him. He also wants to test out free agency. I mean, I don't blame these guys. Why would they want to play for us? Matt Samuels didn't do anything. We'll let Danny Gray go. Byron Young, I'd like to bring back. Three years, 17 mil. He resigns. I definitely want to bring back Will Clapp. We'll give him two years, five and a half mil. Bruh. Let's just go ahead and bring back our kicker and punter real quick, and then we'll get to free agency. All right, our kicker and punter. After our punter said he's going to free agency, I don't even care. We'll sign kicker and punter in free agency. Let's see who is in free agency here, because, again, we can go for pretty much anybody. Michael Pierce is already 32. We don't really need him. Same with Hargrave. Frankie Louvu wouldn't be a terrible addition. Here in free agency, we are going for Christian Benford. 
we got to give him a bigger deal. There we go. We're now at least tied for the top offer. We're going for Joe Tryonchoenka, who I think would be a good addition to this team. Jeff Okuda. We're going to try to bring back Ronnie Hickman. So let's go ahead and send these through. Everybody signs besides Tryonchoenka. And we got Okuda and Ronnie Hickman. Tryonchoenka is holding out. All right, I'm going to give him... I gave him a really big offer so that we can just send to the draft and, you know, hopefully we'll get him. So here's a look at the lineup after free agency. In the draft, we probably need another tackle. Pool is pretty bad. We also need to trade Mac Jones. And we did get Treon Choenka. I think he is like a DN pretty much. So we didn't necessarily need him because we have a lot of D linemen. But we can we can address that uh, in a bit. But in the draft, we need to definitely not go for D line. We have enough D linemen up to this point. So we actually have the third overall pick in this draft. The guy I think I want the most is DeAndre Brown. So I'm going to try to trade down with the Lions. And we're going to try to get as much value from this third overall pick as we can. So we're going to trade the third overall pick and a fourth round pick and then a fifth round pick from 2027 for the Lions first and second round pick in this year's draft and their first round pick next year. They had Devin Lloyd who was up to superstar who I was going to try to get but I thought it'd be more valuable to try to get draft picks and try to you know slowly build this team together. So we will only have one first uh, one first round pick in the draft here but we're going to go for that tackle and then we'll have an extra pick in the second round. And then again, we'll have uh, two first rounders next year or so. But DeAndre Brown is still on the board. He's 22 out of Penn State. He's not the strongest, but he's a fucking athlete. Elite speed, change of direction, agility, and excel. And these stats look really good. His run blocking isn't that good. Neither is his... The more I look at it, the worse he gets. But I think he's going to have hidden dev. And I think he's going to be a good overall. So we're going to take him. Hidden dev, 88 strength is a little bit low, but 85 excel for a tackle is pretty sick he'll probably be like a 76 overall that's my guess i just fucking skipped my pick and it took a strong safety dude i don't need a strong safety <sighs> we could go for rashad minor here he is 23 years old he's also really slow he has elite strength though a zone coverage b press his man is really low but he has good block shedding good catching good hit power his only bad ratings are like his play rec and his man isn't very good, but I kind of like him. Let's go with Rashad Miner here. He has hidden dev, only 90 speed and 90 excel. But hey, I'll take hidden dev. Hopefully that safety that the fucking CPU took is good because that I, that was actually so annoying. And I mean, I guess we could go with another O-lineman here. Cooper Hanna looks okay. We could also go with Daniel Roper. Let's see if he looks better. Honestly, he looks worse. We're going to go with the other guy. Honestly, I wouldn't hate going for Shelton Lumpkin either. 21 out of USC. He ran a 4-4-2 and had 21 bench traps. A spec catch, B medium route, B release, A stiff farm, A to C catch in traffic. His awareness could be low, which kind of scares me, but the rest of his ratings look great. Let's go with Shelton Lumpkin here. Hidden dead with 93 speed, 91 change of direction. That's going to be the last pick I'm going to take. We'll leave the rest up to the CPU. I'm praying that that fucking strong safety the CPU took is good, but let's see how we did in the draft. And the strong safety actually is a 79 overall. I don't remember what I guessed... DeAndre Brown overalls was going to be. I definitely guessed higher than 73, but Shepard's a 79, so I guess the CPU did make a good pick. Miners a 74, and Lumpkin's also a 74. The CPU took a 72 overall tight end, who actually has hidden dev and is 21 years old. They also took a 71 overall running back, only normal dev, and they also took a 71 overall middle linebacker, who's normal dev. But the best overall player in the class was an 85 overall running back who goes to the Vikings. There was an 84 overall. There's an 84 overall running back as well. We missed out on these guys. I never really look at drafting running backs. There's also an 81 overall. I'm just scared to draft running backs, dude. I swear, developing running backs is like the hardest thing to do in this game. But this is what the offense is looking like going into this year. We move Pool over to the right side, so maybe he'll do better over there because Brown is now going to be holding down the left side. We are going to start Staten over Mac Jones probably going to trade Mac Jones and see what we can get out of him. And you know, at least we got a pretty good uh, safety over here in Shepard. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with the D line here because we just have like a bunch of DNs. I mean, James Houston is like almost a D tackle anyway. We could move him to D tackle maybe. And you know what? Let's just leave Shoenka at linebacker because I think he's one of our rushing DNs anyway because he's also like our highest overall running back. So let's just leave him up there for now. And we turn Mac Jones into a 2028 20, third round pick. We are sitting at a 75 overall going into the season. This is starting to get pretty difficult. I think we're going to have a really bad year again, so we'll probably just get straight to the end of the year. 
we're gonna have to hope that some good free agents start hitting the market pretty soon here but let's get to the end of the year and let's see how this team does i'm not playing fair with my love no more feelings i just can't ignore pray we've been here turn before but baby so long so long dude i fucking ate that shit you can't lie you know what i honestly cannot complain about seven and ten that's a lot better than i expected we still had the worst offense and points per game but we had the 26 defense so let's see how everybody did this year Ooh, and joshua staten with a good year 4,000 yards 32 touchdowns to 14 picks Ron White was pretty bad. We need to look into getting a running back here pretty soon. But 860 yards and 10 touchdowns could be enough for rookie of the year. Probably not. Justin Hill with a fucking crazy year. 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns. Now this is probably offensive rookie of the year. 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns out of Shelton Lumpkin. DeAndre Brown was better than the other tackles we had. Poole only allowed uh, 8 at right tackle this year. But 11 still isn't great. 8 out of Kenyon Green isn't very good. But I guess everybody else is doing okay. Josh Hitchens got 132 tackles as a rookie. We got a lot of tackles. Our defense must have been on the field a lot. 19 TFLs out of Foskey. 14 out of Oye, Oye Ingbo. 14 out of Byron Young. 19 out of, or 9 out of Shoyinka. 6.5 sacks out of Oye Ingbo. 4 out of Foster. 3 out of Shoyinka. I don't know. I feel like defense is not playing very good. I forgot to check our interceptions. I don't know if I've done that at all this whole time. I That's the, one of the things I forget like most often is checking how many interceptions we got garrett williams got three okuda got three two out of hitchens this could possibly be defensive rookie of the year he got six tfls as well one out of cox and one out of brian miller mvp goes to patrick mahomes again nfc offense player of the year goes to devonta smith on the vikings justin hill comes in sixth place defensive player of the year goes to daniel hunter on the seahawks offensive rookie of the year Okay, that was suspenseful. Does go to Shelton Lumpkin, so we had another Offensive Rookie of the Year receiver. Looks like Ron White actually came in fourth place. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Nolan Hood. We actually came in second place with Josh Hitchens. We also came in seventh with Jeremiah Shepard. But hey, we are slowly making progress. We started off 2-15, and 15, then we went 3-14. and 14. Now we're 7-10, and 10, so we just got to add you know, a few more pieces here and there, and we should hopefully find ourselves in the playoffs. The goal is to win a Super Bowl this video because that is what kata zan wanted but dude i if we're like six seven years in we haven't won a super bowl like i'm gonna have to call it there but the chargers won the super bowl here 30 to 14 over the cowboys this is where we need to take a look at our uh dev traits and lumpkin actually doesn't go up for winning rookie of the year i don't know why that is we will move him up in the depth chart though hey staten's up to an 80 overall and on defense we actually had a lot of people go down I thought Hitchens would go up. We're having, we actually had a lot of people go down. Foskey is the only one who stayed star, and I feel like he didn't even have that good of a year. But it's whatever. I guess team morale's low, so that's probably what's causing us to go down. But we're up to a 79 overall, so we're making progress here. We have 14 players ready to negotiate with $140 million to spend. Definitely want to bring back Ricky Stromberg. We'll give him three years, 17 mil, and he resigns. Kenyon Green didn't have that good of a year, but let's go ahead and bring him back as well. Four years, 21 mil. He also resigns. Anthony Schwartz, I'm not too... Mm, we drafted a hidden dev tight end to be our backup. We don't need to bring back Tremble either. I'm okay with letting the rest of these guys go. So maybe we'll finally see some good free agents here. It's been, I think, two free agent classes so far. We've gotten a couple like decent guys, but you know we could definitely use some better players. See, and this is the problem. Like, There's good players, but they're just old. And with how bad we are... I don't know if we can be going for older players like that. We could go for Zach Charbonnet. In free agency, we're going to go for Josh Sweat. And I know we said we had a lot of D-linemen, but they all got a lot worse. So let's go for Josh Sweat. We're going to go for Zach Charbonnet. Dontavian Wicks. We're going to go for Marte Marpu. And we have a good strong safety, but he could play free safety for us. And we're also going to go for Kenneth Murray, who we need to give a bigger deal to. But let's go ahead and send these offers through. And we only got Charbonnet and Kenneth Murray. Wow. Well, that was definitely a little underwhelming. I thought we were going to get more than that there, but I guess it's whatever. The problem is this was going to be the one time I was going to go for running back in the draft. I focus scouted like all running backs, and then we pick up a running back in free agency. But in the draft, it's looking like we need to go for a couple of O linemen, at least a center. And then, I don't know, we could technically use more on the D line. Um, I thought Miner was hidden dev. I don't know why he went down to star, but... Yeah, let's get into the draft here. I honestly may 
see now running back is like one of our least like our smallest needs position wise but dude the, if one of those running backs i focus scouted says like top five talent well a running back actually just got taken so that might be the best one but if it says like top five talent after seeing all those high overall running backs i may have to take one um the best one left is jose claiborne out of north carolina he ran a 437 jesus christ and i mean he looks good if he's here in the second round we'll take him how about that we could go with george stanford he has elite change of direction agility and excel a finesse moves a to c power moves a play rec let's go ahead and take him here in the first round hidden dev with 85 strength 87 excel only 22 years old i think that's going to be a good addition to the d line oh i forgot we have two first round picks too hoping that corner i was looking at is still available oh and it looks like he got taken we do need a center Derek Rosen looks pretty good. He's 22 out of Texas. He had 31 bench reps and ran a 497. Really good run blocking, except for his finesse. But everything else looks pretty good, so let's go ahead and take him. Hidden Dev, 86 strength. And now is the moment of truth. Is the running back going to be available at uh, round two, pick 11? Oh, and he actually is. So we're going to take a shot on him. We did just sign a running back. But who knows, maybe we can hit on one of these fucking 85 overalls that the CPUs are getting. He does have hidden dev. He has 94 speed, 92 excel. Damn, that's tempting. We may have to start him over Charbonnet. Should we go with another D tackle? Timmy Singe, 22 out of West Virginia. His ratings look actually pretty good. He has A play rec, B power moves, and B finesse moves. B awareness, A tackle. This guy looks fucking good. Let's take him. He also has hidden dev with 89 strength. So we're probably going to have two new starting D tackles this year. I'm honestly okay with letting the CPU take it out from here. Let's get to the end of the draft and let's see how we did. You know, I'd say we did pretty good. Sanford is only a 73. Okay, what the fuck? But the center we took is a 75 and the running back we took is a 77 overall. So we may have to start him. The other D tackle we took is a 72. The CPU took a 74 overall guard. Only normal dev. And it looks like the best player in the class was the running back that the commanders took. I probably would have taken this guy if he didn't get taken before us, but... I'm okay with the running back we got, if I'm being honest. Let's see how Charbonnet's been doing in the sim, because if he's been doing good, I'll probably just keep him starting, but if he's been doing bad, I don't see a point. Yeah, he was he averaged 3.5 for carry, 3.6, 3.7. I think we're going to start our rookie. But this is what the offense is looking like after the draft. We definitely filled up a couple holes. And here's the defense after the draft. We're going to start both of our D tackles, or our rookie D tackles on the D line this year. We'll see how that goes. Um, I would say on defense, we could still use better corners and better linebackers, but we're definitely making progress at the end of the day. We're still not good enough that I think I want to get to the midseason and check how we're doing. So we're just going to get straight to the end of this year. We're at 79 overall. I believe this is the fourth year. So let's get to the end of the year and let's see how this team can do. So we end up finishing the season 5-12. and 12. So we're moving backwards a little bit, but we are only an 80 overall, so I guess I understand. Staten had an all right year, 4,000 yards, 25 touchdowns, 13 picks. By the way, when I started recording this video this morning, I was at a solid 100 subscribers, and I'm finishing it right now. It's about 10 at night, and we are sitting at 120. So thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed. But Jose Claiborne definitely didn't have the best year. He only averaged 3.6 per carry and got four touchdowns. Justin Hill with another great year, 1,300 yards, seven touchdowns. Lumpkin might get a dev up for this, 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns. Jelani Woods did good. John Mechie did good. How is this even possible? How do you allow 20 sacks? Holy shit. And Kenneth Murray did all right. He got 129 tackles. We got 20 TFLs out of Isaiah Foskey, 17 out of Stanford. wonder if this is good enough for defensive rookie of the year. Eight out of Papo. Six sacks out of Isaiah Foskey, five and a half out of Stanford, two and a half out of Treon Choinka. And Brian Miller actually got four picks, two out of Kenneth Murray, one out of Lewis Sign, one out of Jamara Shepard. One out of Jeremiah Shepard, one out of Garrett Williams, one out of Rashad Miner, one out of Dan Belton. MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes again. Offensive player of the year goes to Brees Hall on the Packers. I'm actually surprised to not see us anywhere up here. Stevens player of the year goes to Micah Parsons for the Eagles. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Caleb Casey for the 49ers. We came in fourth with Jose Claiborne. Stevens rookie of the year goes to George Stanford, so that's fucking huge. We actually got 7th place too, but I honestly don't know who this is. And the Cardinals win the Super Bowl 30-27. to We have a 5th year option for Justin Hill. I'm considering accepting this because he's not interested in the team. He's going to be expensive when his contract comes around. I actually think I am going to accept this. 
Isaiah Foskey, actually a pretty good year. He went up to superstar, so let's try to get him back. We'll give him five years, 79 mil. He wants to play for a new team next year. Ooh, and a tag is 26 million. I mean, we have a lot of money, and it's not like we really, really need to bring the rest of these guys back. We can bring back Oide Yingbo if he takes three years, 27 mil, and he does take it. I think I am going to use the franchise tag on Isaiah Foskey. We have the money to do so, so we may as well. We still have 111. We still have 111 million to spend in free agency. So let's hope some big names hit the market here. Okay, and Quinnen Williams is in free agency. Marquise Bell wouldn't be a bad addition either. I mean, Kenneth Murray did have a good year though. I mean, we could use Deion Dawkins. Our tackle play has been so bad. Ooh, actually, I think we're gonna go for Broderick Jones instead. So in our free agency, we're gonna go for Broderick Jones and Quinnen Williams. We are the top offer for both, but we have other teams tied with us. I'd really like to get Quinn and Williams, but if we don't get Broderick Jones, I'll be a little okay with it. Oh, and we had a I got it backwards. Where did Quinn and Williams go? Damn, Quinn and Williams goes to the fucking Dolphins. Keanu Benton didn't get signed. We do have a couple decent D tackles, but I mean it can't hurt to go for him. Quinn and Williams is gonna be really expensive, so I guess it's alright. We didn't do teams really want Keanu Benton. Alright, I gave him a massive offer. We'll send this through. I don't think we're gonna get him, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah, we don't get them, but it's all right, honestly. We have two pretty young D tackles for us up to this point. I don't know if I checked our uh, our dev traits after the Super Bowl. Claiborne is superstar. Lumpkin is also superstar. So Claiborne being superstar is actually huge. On defense, Foskey went up to superstar, but we already saw that. We really need another linebacker. We, I'd really like to draft a corner in this draft too. Because Shoyinka is honestly like an edge rusher too, so he's not even doing much up here. I don't know. I guess let's just get into the draft here. I'd really like to draft a corner. And we should have a really high draft pick this year as well. So hopefully that'll make this easier for us. So we pick up four in this year's draft. I'm not going to be drafting a D end. We could go for Niles Anderson, although he doesn't even look that good. Ooh, okay. We're going to go with Gregory. Wow, I can't talk. We're going to go with Gregory. Oh my God. We're going to go with Gregory Clay with our pick probably. And then hopefully also try to draft an O-tackle at some point. But hey, there's a top five talent corner that's projected to fall to nine. I think we know who we're going to be taking. So Gregory Clay is 22 out of Mississippi State. He ran a 4-3-3. He has elite excel and elite agility. I don't know how. That's not elite speed. But he has A-man, B-press, A-zone. Only C play rec, but A-awareness, B-block shedding, A-catching. This guy's a stud. I think he's going to be like an 80-plus overall. 94 should be 95 excel. But with our pick in the second round here, do we go with like a linebacker or do we take do we take an offensive tackle? This tackle doesn't look bad. Amari Garner, he's 22 out of Washington. He had 37 bench reps at the combine. I feel like that should be elite strength, but really good run block power, really good pass block. He actually has good pass block finesse as well, which I wouldn't expect out of a power O lineman. This guy actually looks really good. The C to F injury worries me he might be normal dead. This guy's 6'7", 324, so let's go ahead and take him and I fucking called it. He has normal dev. So whatever, our fucking right tackle like Booth or whatever his name is is fucking dog shit, so this guy's gonna start anyway. Ooh, and this linebacker looks really good. Will Sharp, 22 out of Notre Dame. His ratings aren't crazy, but A tackling, B play rec, A pursuit, A hit power, A impact blocking, B finesse moves, A block shedding. He's kind of like almost a rusher in a way, but he has bad power moves. His finesse moves are all right. He has a run stopper archetype. But we're going to take him. This guy's definitely going to be hidden dev. He is. That guy might be like a 76 overall, honestly. That guy looks really fucking good. And we have another pick in the third round from the trade we made. It's actually the number seven pick as well. And there was another good looking corner on the board. Oh, and he's actually still available. Cameron Jones out of Wisconsin. We're in a 4 4 5. He has elite excel. B man, B press, B zone, A stamina. B catching, B hit power. Let's go ahead and take him. Only normal. 91 speed, 94 excel. He's six foot. Um, I thought that guy was going to be better than that, if I'm being honest. But let's get into the final pick we're going to take here. I might just take another linebacker. Virgil Rich. Wow, I can't talk. I might just take another linebacker. Virgil Rich looks really good. He's a run stopper. He's 6'3 out of Michigan State. He has elite speed. He ran a 4.58. He has A play rec, A to C man, B to D zone, A to C awareness. B hit power. A lot of A to C, so I wish I had a more scouted, but I like him. Let's go ahead and take him. Hidden Dev, another good linebacker that can probably play for us 
So let's sim this draft out and let's get to the draft recap. In the corner we took in the first round did end up being an 81 overall. The tackle we took isn't great. He's only a 73. He's going to start for us anyways. Sharp is a 75. I may have called that. I'm not 100% sure. The other corner we took is a 76. The other linebacker we took is also a 76. The best player in the class was an 82 overall quarterback, but we weren't going for a quarterback anyway, so we pretty much got the best possible player we could have in this draft. Honestly, forgot we got Broderick Jones. We could almost move... Or was Brown the guy that allowed all those... I think Brown was the guy who allowed all the sacks. It wasn't Poole, was it? No, Poole has been pretty bad, though, so I think we are going to bench him for the rookie we drafted. But here's a look at the roster after the draft. I think we look pretty good. Claiborne does have negative morale. We need him to have a bounce back year, but... Staten has a good receiving core, a good tight end core. Then I actually really like how the defense looks. It looks like Miller goes up to star, so we have two stud young corners. And then with the addition of Rich and Sharp, we can move Treon Choyinka down to the D-line. But this is what the defense is looking like. We got a completely new linebacker group other than Kenneth Murray. The D-line actually looks pretty good. Foskey does go up to superstar, and Treon Choyinka is now going to have a starting spot on the D-line. Yo, is this game fucking stupid? It just moved Foskey up to linebacker, even though he's a DN. Um, what the fuck? All right, so we fixed the problem at linebacker, but fucking Treon Chwenka's on the other end. I want him to be on the right end. I'll fucking fix that in the, uh, the whatever the fuck it's called, the, like, rushing right end, rushing DN bullshit. Going into this season, we are in 83 overall. I believe this is, like, the fourth or the fifth year. We're slowly making progress. I'd like to see a little bit more. Hopefully, we can have, like, a winning record this year. Probably not though. It's not very likely, but until I think that you know, we're gonna be a playoff team We're gonna keep simming to the end of the season So let's get to the end of this year and let's see how we finish out. We finished the season 5 and 12 again We had the 19th offensive points per game, which isn't bad And we had the third passing offense in yards per game. The defense was awful. We had the last defense in points per game uh, let's See how everybody did I guess and Staten was actually third in the NFL in passing yards this year. He threw for 4,500 yards, 30 touchdowns, but he threw 20 interceptions. Um, I thought I benched Zach Charbonnet for some reason. Uh, Jose Claiborne wasn't in, but Charbonnet actually did pretty good. He averaged four per carry and got nine touchdowns. Justin Hill's a fucking stud. 1,400 yards, six touchdowns. John Mechie did really good. 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns. Lumpkin did really good. 900 yards, eight touchdowns. Dude, we just can't find a tackle to play good. Broderick Jones allows 16 sacks. Kenneth Murray got 128 tackles, 108 out of uh, Will Sharp, 24 TFLs out of Treon Shoyinka, 18 out of Foskey, 16 out of Stanford, 15 out of Singe, 8 sacks out of Stanford, 5 out of Foskey, 2.5 out of Shoyinka, 2 out of Singe. We're not getting many sacks, dude. 3 picks out of Kenneth Murray, 2 out of Brian Miller, 2 out of Gregory, two out of Gregory Clay. He might be up there for defensive rookie of the year. He probably won't win it. One out of Jeremiah Shepard, one out of Ronnie Hickman, one out of Josh Hitchens. MVP goes to Trevor Lawrence for the Bengals. That's interesting. Offensive Player of the Year goes to Jameer Gibbs on the 49ers. That's also interesting. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Max Crosby on the 49ers. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Larry Cooks for the Cardinals. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Steven Patterson also for the Cardinals. We came in third place with Gregory Clay, fourth with Will Sharp. We're kind of reaching that point where like, dude, this shit's been going on for too long. Shout out to the dude who gave me this video idea, dude. If I can't get you the Super Bowl win that you wanted in this video, I apologize, dude. I'm trying my fucking hardest right now. The Cowboys win the Super Bowl because, of course, they do. Let's see how the lineup's looking after the season. And Staten's up to an 85 overall, which actually isn't bad at all. The O-line looks a little rough. The receivers look great. We could probably add one more, although John Mechie's playing really good for us. And on defense, the only dev trade we have is Gregory Clay. We could probably use another safety at some point. But I like how our linebackers look. I kind of like how the D-line looks. Shoyinka goes down to normal dev, though. And we high need another D-tackle as well. We went from having infinite D-linemen to a bunch of shitty ones. So maybe we try to get a D-lineman in the draft or in free agency. If only we got fucking Quinn and Williams, dude. But we have 117 mil for re-signings here. We have to bring back Isaiah Foskey. I didn't even realize that he went down in dev trait. He wants a lot of money. We'll give him four years, 71 mil. He's not interested in signing. We may have to tag him again. 32 million. I don't know if I can do that. Damn, we have to re-sign Joshua Staten. Is five years, 117 mil good enough for you? It's not. That was actually a cheap deal for a quarterback. Holy fuck, this is looking scary. We got a fifth year option for DeAndre Brown. That's really expensive. I'd like to bring back Brian Miller. This is real cheap. Three years, 12 mil. He re-signs. 
Yeah, it's going to be everybody we bring back in free agency. We're going to have to try to get back Isaiah Foskey and our quarterback because, you know, we can't fucking go without a quarterback. Like, holy shit. wonder if we can afford to get Lamar. Not afford, but I wonder, like, oh, my God, we might get fucking Lamar Jackson. So it's going to take pretty much all of our cap space. But we're going to go for Lamar Jackson, Tyler Smith, and Isaiah Foskey here in free agency. All three of them sign. We do not get Foskey back, but we got Lamar and we got Tyler Smith. It's almost the perfect thing that our quarterback didn't resign because now we have a 99 overall X-Factor Lamar Jackson. You know what? With the money we have left, we may as well go for Tevin Bonds as well. We'll send this through. He hasn't signed yet. He may go with the Titans or the Falcons. He still hasn't signed. And I don't even have any more of the avail evaluate offers button. So I'm just going to give him a pretty fat offer. And then we will send to the draft and, you know, we'll see if we get him. But here's a look at the offense after free agency. And we look really good. I didn't even realize we lost uh, John Mechie. Fuck. Okay, we'll try to draft a receiver. But 99 overall Lamar. 95 overall X-Factor receiver. We add Tyler Smith to the O-line. And shit, Brown's back starting at tackle. I guess we're going to have to see how that goes. And then on defense, this is a little scary. We did get Bonds. Uh, Hitchens goes down to normal, so we could still kind of use a linebacker, but we could really go for a D lineman in the draft. We're going to have a pretty good pick, so hopefully there's somebody good we're able to grab here. I think we're going to go for Brandon Livingston and move him down to D line. And he's not projected to go till 20, so let's try to trade down with the Cardinals and let's see what we can get. Because if we could get two first round picks, then we could try to go for a D lineman and a receiver. That would be huge. I guess not two first rounders, but two second rounders. So we're trading down to 19 with the Cardinals. In addition, we get the their second round pick and we get their second round pick for next year as well. So hopefully we can use that extra second rounder for a potential like receiver or something. But I think we're going to take that outside linebacker that we saw and move him down to D line. There was a really good edge rusher projected to go number one overall. I did not feel like trading up to number one though. That sounds like a lot of work. Here's my boy Brandon Livingston, 22 out of Ole Miss. He has elite acceleration and elite jumping. A to C finesse moves, so hopefully it's like an A or a B. A awareness, A tackling, A pursuit. I like this guy a lot. Let's go ahead and take him. He's going to play DN for us. He has hidden depth. He has 90 excel, 81 strength. That guy's going to be a nasty DN for us. And hey, we have two picks here in the second round. The first one's at pick five. Let's see what the receivers are looking like here. Okay, and they actually look pretty bad other than Jordan Sheldon, who isn't projected to go to the third or fourth round. But I don't think I want to miss out on this guy. He ran a 4-4-6, had 17 bench reps at the combine. He has elite jumping, A spec catch, B short route, B run block, B deep route, A catch in traffic, A catching, B release. Dude, how is this guy around 3-4 to four projection? I don't even care. I'm taking him right now. Hidden dev, 93 speed, 95 jumping, 87 excel, 6-3, 233. And then what do we do with our next pick? Maybe go for a D tackle. I think we could use another one. Xavier McBride looks all right. He's 21 out of Miami. He had 33 bench reps at the combine, which isn't bad. B block shedding, B play rec. He has A to C finesse moves as a power rusher. Oh, as a run stopper. He looks okay. I think he's going to be normal dev. He's also around three to four projection. Let me look real hard at the other ones first before I do that. I mean, Austin Carson doesn't look bad. Holy shit, elite excel, elite agility, elite change of direction. B power moves, A fin Yeah, never mind. Let's just go with this guy. Damn, he has normal dev, but I think that guy's going to be a pretty decent overall. And we'll start him at D tackle, at least our D tackle two. What else do we need? Maybe one more corner. I don't think that could hurt. And there were some good looking corners previously. I don't know. If they're still here. Ooh, Marquis. Marquis Guinness still here, 22 out of Mississippi State. Elite strength. A press, B zone, only C man, but I like this guy a lot. We're going to go ahead and take him, and he has hidden dev. I was actually expecting them to have normal because he fell so far in the draft, but 90 speed, 93 excel is not bad, and 70, 73 strength for corner is really good, but I'm going to let the CPU have the rest of this one. We'll see how we did in the draft recap. So Brandon Livingston actually went up overall at DN. He's a 75. Jordan Sheldon's also a 75. Carson's a 74, so he'll probably start on the D-line anyway. And then Marquis Ginn is a 75. I don't know how we got him in the third round. And the D-in that went number one overall is only a 77, so I'm glad I didn't trade up for him. The best player in the class was an 81 overall receiver. There's an 81 overall running back and an 81 overall quarterback. So here's a look at the offense after the draft, and we look fucking good. 
Lamar now has three good weapons to throw to, including uh, Jelani Woods, so I guess four. Pretty decent running back. Uh, Claiborne didn't get the start last year for some reason. That should change this year. The defense looks a little iffy to me. We definitely need some help at linebacker, so I kind of missed out on that in the draft. But the D-line looks a lot better with the addition of Livingston. I know it doesn't show the corner we drafted here in our corners, but I do have him in at the, uh, the slot corner. But we are an 85 overall going into this year. So hopefully we'll actually, you know, make a playoff spot or something. Let's get to the mid-season of this year and let's see how we're looking. Dude, imagine we had gotten Quinn and Williams that one year and we had Quinn and Williams and Lamar Jackson. At the mid-season, we are 3-2-1, and one, so we tied with the Eagles. We actually have the second offensive points per game in the 11th defense, so we're definitely, you know, trending up. Lamar's doing great, 1,600 yards, 14 touchdowns, only 3 picks with a 70% completion percentage. Claiborne's still not doing very good. He's only averaging 3.8 per carry. He has a touchdown. Charbonnet has five touchdowns. Lamar's doing pretty good on the ground. Jordan Sheldon's actually our leading receiver as a rookie, so that's huge. You know what? The O-line looks the best. It's probably looked throughout this uh, video. Hey, and Austin Carson has five sacks as a rookie. Livingston has two. Both of our rookies are leading the team in sacks, so I really don't have much to complain about here. I would have a lot less to complain about if we can get a playoff spot. Let's get to the end of the year. And let's see if we can make the playoffs. And we are in the playoffs at 8-8-1. Eight, eight, and one. Holy fuck. We finished with the 8th offense and points per game with the 5th passing offense. Defense definitely fell off in the second half of the year. But Lamar Jackson with a fucking crazy year. 4,300 yards, 34 touchdowns, 5 picks, 73% completion percentage. This is an MVP year out of Lamar. Claiborne actually had a pretty decent second half of the year. 1,000 yards, 4 per carry, 6 touchdowns. Lamar had 5 touchdowns on the ground and we had 10 out of Charbonnet. Justin Hill goes crazy again, 1,300 yards, 9 touchdowns. Lumpkin goes crazy again. And then Jordan Sheldon with almost 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns as a rookie. Probably going to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. And the O-line, I really cannot complain about. Broderick Jones didn't play great, but what we allowed 10, 13, 15, 16, 17. 17 sacks on the year, so we're allowing one per game. That's definitely not bad. Kenneth Murray got 135 tackles. 19 TFLs out of Livingston, 17 out of Carson, 10 out of George Stanford. And our defense did not perform in the second half of the year. Austin Carson only got like two and a half more sacks. Uh, Treon Chuenka finishes with seven sacks. And Livingston only finishes with six and a half. So I don't know if we're going to win defensive rookie of the year. MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes, of course. Lamar actually comes in fifth. So we got our first MVP bow of the video. Offensive player of the year in the NFC goes to Anthony Richardson. We came in fourth place with Lamar Jackson. Defensive player of the year goes to Max Crosby. We, of course, don't have anybody in the running. Offensive Rookie of the Year, of course, goes to Jordan Sheldon. Defensive Rookie of the Year actually does go to us for Austin Carson, and Livingston was the runner-up. But none of that matters. We have our first playoff game of the video, and we're going against the Falcons, who are fucking broken in this game. They didn't have the best offense this year. They had a really good rushing offense, but their defense was fucking crazy. Let's sim pass the wild card, and let's see if we can beat the Atlanta Falcons. And we don't. All right. This next season may have to be the last year, even if we don't make the Super Bowl, dude. I'm sorry, but... This I don't want this video to be fucking two hours long, you know. I still got to record the uh, 100 subscriber special. But a big free agency class here, I think, would uh, get us over the line. The Eagles win the Super Bowl 31-28. to And on offense, Sheldon actually has superstar. Or he may have gotten that for winning Offensive Rookie of the Year, but the offense looks so good. And on defense, Carson does go up to superstar for winning Defensive Rookie of the Year. Livingston, for some reason, goes down to normal. Don't know what that's about, but Clay goes up to X-Factor. So I'm actually happy with how the team is looking as of now. We have to see what players we have to re-sign. We only have 57 mil, which is a lot, but, you know, compared to the previous years, we've had a lot more. So hopefully there's not too many big names here. I think we're going to have to re-sign at least one of those rookies we've drafted up to this point because we have 21 players ready to negotiate. We have to bring back Justin Hill, Shelton Lumpkin, Jeremiah Shepard, George Stanford, Derek Rosen, DeAndre Brown, Zach Charbonnet. Oh my god, this is going to get sketchy. We're not able to get Justin Hill. He declines our offer. Dude, and a tag is 34 mil. Let's try to bring back these players first. Let's try to bring back Shelton Lumpkin. Five years, 68 mil. He actually does take it, so that's good. Jeremiah Shepard. We'll just give him a base offer. Three years, 24 mil. And he resigns. And George Stanford is just a fifth year option, so we actually don't have to worry about that. Same with Rosen. DeAndre Brown. Actually had a pretty good year, so we'll re-sign him. We'll give him three years, 27 mil, or 23 mil, and he takes it. We need to bring back Jelani Woods. We'll give him three years, 18 mil. He re-signs. And then we'll bring back Ricky Stromberg. We'll give him one year, six mil. 
he also resigned. So now we're gonna have to tag the receiver. But the problem is with that, um, I think I franchise tagged him. I don't know, something weird happened. The problem is with that, we're gonna have negative money in free agency. So we're gonna have to try to restructure. Maybe we can restructure the deal we gave Lamar and free up some money, but let's see what we can do. Actually, let's see who's in free agency first because it actually says we have 8 million now. And I mean, none of these guys are like crazy that we need to go for. We could go for Ragno. Ooh, Greg Newsom wouldn't be a bad addition. Neither would Rishi Rice, but we don't need Rishi Rice. You know what? Let's just not go for anyone in free agency. I'm okay with that. Let's save this money so that we can use our draft picks for this year to hopefully trade for, I don't know, maybe an edge rusher because the dude we drafted is now normal dev and didn't even do that good last year. Our D line play has just been so bad this video. I don't know why, but I think we traded a pick down last year. So I think we'll even have an extra pick to hopefully trade for somebody because we're not going to need our draft picks for this year because I think we'd be better off just trying to trade for somebody. All right, and we give up pretty much our whole entire draft for this year and we acquire Max Crosby. So that's going to be the uh, hopefully the final addition we need to get this team to the Super Bowl. And I only had to use draft picks from this year, so I'm actually pretty happy with that. The defense is going to look a lot better after that addition. And Max Crosby is fucking broken in this game. But here's one last look at the lineup before we get the last season started. Lamar had a great year last year. If you can repeat it this year, I think we'll be in a better position. He has plenty of weapons to work with. And then this defense looks real good um, with the addition of Max Crosby. The linebackers look all right. The safeties are good. We have good corners. So, I mean, if Max Crosby can get a lot of sacks, I think we'll be good. Because we haven't been getting any sacks on defense. And I think that's been about where the problem is coming from. But we have an 89 overall team going into the season. If I'm not able to get to the Super Bowl this year, I'm sorry to the guy who gave me this video idea. I'm literally trying my absolute best. We have kind of a god squad here. So, we should at least make the playoffs realistically. Let's go ahead and sim to the playoffs. And let's see how we do. My heart just sang. I thought we missed the playoffs. We went 16-1 and and we got the first round by with the six offensive points per game and the number one defense. Lamar Jackson throws for 4,200 yards, 40 touchdowns, and only four picks with a 76% completion percentage. Claiborne was actually pretty good this year. 1,100 yards and 14 touchdowns. 3.6 per carry isn't the best, but I mean, I'll take 14 touchdowns. Justin Hill has been such a fucking stud for us. 1,500 yards, 13 touchdowns. Sheldon with a great year, 800 yards, 11 touchdowns. Jelani Woods actually had a great year, 700 yards. And the O-line had a good year again. We allowed 18 total sacks on the year. Kenneth Murray didn't get as many tackles as normally, but I guess we were actually off the field. Max Crosby got 16 TFLs and 20 and a half sacks. Holy shit, and Stanford got 17 sacks and 9 TFLs. Dude, all we needed to get was Max Crosby, and all of a sudden our defense is fucking insane. I always forget to check interception. Holy shit, Gregory Clay got five, three out of Shepard, two out of Brian Miller, one out of Cameron Jones. So not many picks, but we did get five out of Gregory Clay, with it, which is huge. Did Lamar win MVP? Lamar did win MVP. Let's fucking go. Offense player of the year in the NFC goes to Anthony Richardson. We came in third with Lamar Jackson, fifth with Justin Hill. Defense player of the year goes to Max Crosby. We also came in second with George Stanford. And I, we didn't have a rookies because we traded all of our picks for Max Crosby. We have a bye in the first round. Let's see who we're going to be taking on in the divisional. And we're taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. We have the same overall as them, but we went 16-1. and one. We had a better offense and a better defense. So I feel like we should win this game. Let's send to the NFC Championship. And we do beat the Eagles only by a field goal, though. We have a weekly award from the divisional. Lamar Jackson passed for 350 yards and three touchdowns. He also had a touchdown on the ground. We're taking on the 49ers here in the NFC Championship. We again had a better offense and a better defense. We're higher overall. We won a lot more games. Let's send to the Super Bowl, and I feel like we deserve to be in it. Hey, and my boy that gave me this video idea, I at least made it to one Super Bowl for you. We'll see if we win it, but first we gotta look at the lineup and see everybody's dev tray after the year. It actually looks like everybody stays the same on offense, which is a little surprising. And I also thought that, was it Stanford that went crazy? I thought he'd go up in dev tray. We actually didn't get, I don't think we got a single dev up, but hey, who cares? The team played good, we're in the Super Bowl. So let's go ahead and hop in and let's see what happens here. So it looks like the Colts drive down early to get a touchdown. They're driving down the field again. They go up 10 to nothing in the second quarter, but we're driving down the field. We get a touchdown of our own. It's now a three-point game, but they get a field goal to go up by six. We score a touchdown to go up by one, but they get a late touchdown to make it a six-point game. 
they get a stop we get a stop we're driving down the field again but get stopped it's a lot of defense right now being played we do go up by one and to enter the fourth quarter they get a touchdown and make it a seven point game wow we need a one minute 45 second touchdown drive to win the super bowl and we unfortunately do not get it done we lose the super bowl to the indianapolis colts hey my boy zan or whatever your name was i tried my best for you um i would do another year for you man but we're not gonna have much money and i think i did the best i can i made a super bowl out of a 68 overall team that we started off with if i did another year I, like this video is probably already long enough you're probably sitting here watching it's almost been a fucking hour at this point i tried my best for you man we made it to a super bowl i'm pretty happy with where this team came from and i'm pretty sure the team we played in the super bowl is actually higher overall than us so i'm not too upset about the fact that we lost oh we actually had the same overall team but they had the second offensive points per game in the fourth defense so they were a really good team i'm okay with how this rebuild's ending i hope you are too if you made it this far you clearly enjoyed the video so leave a like and subscribe to the channel it means a lot to me that's going to be the end of this one deuces